Yes, that is I believe uh, by Jonathan Nelson. What an incredible track. We say bye-bye to all the pains and the trouble and the sorrow and all the things that we are or you might be struggling with. It's time to say bye-bye. Well, it's me, your host, John, again. And uh, for those who are tuning in live on Facebook, you can see I'm not by myself, okay? I'm with the man of God, Pastor Mark Scooney. If it's your first time to tune in, this is the God and me time. What does that mean? Uh, well, it means, as it says, God and you. It's that time we set aside on a very beautiful Saturday morning. The date is the 12th of March. Can you believe it? March already. It is March and we want to just go into the presence of God. Uh, well, we've got uh, Cheryl Ann Kanemeyer. She's saying good morning, Mark. Blessings. Good morning, woman of God. May the Lord bless you. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Shout out to you. Praise Shout out to the, the Kanemaya family, oh, yes. Dexter, and everybody else in the Kanemaya family. We Praise really appreciate you. <laughs> wow, awesome. Uh, so, Pastor Mark, do you want to just, um, you know, break down what is a God and me uh, time? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you so much for this honor and this privilege to be with you once again here in the studio. Um, so God and me time, the premise of God and me in time on, and the point of uh, departure uh, is basically summarized in the title of the program, uh, God and me time. We, we have me time that we have every, every so often, maybe every time once a week or Saturday morning where we have me time. We look after ourselves. We, we recover after a busy hectic week and we we just replenish and refresh um, ourselves now i believe that during this me time session god invades our me time it's no longer mm -hmm. me time mm -hmm. it's now god and me it's both of us myself and god um the Bible, it actually brings to mind a, a verse of scripture that says nearer to God and God will uh, will come nearer to you. And um, I believe that this is that time where we just have a our breakfast, where mm -hmm. we just have a glass of juice, uh, uh, or we have a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, and we have our notes, and we have our Bible, and we just um, fellowship together. We break bread, basically. Mm -hmm. um, the emphasis is on... Uh, preaching the gospel, but also mm. on uh, correctly um, dividing mm. the word of truth because because truth incorrectly divided ceases to be truth altogether. Mm. So so we, we, we try to apportion uh, and we try to remain in context. We try to challenge uh, and to inspire and to motivate. And we, we believe that God uses this time to fill us mm -hmm. with himself on the on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. And then tomorrow as we go into the first day of the week, uh, we go to the house of the Lord on fire. Mm -hmm. Then we're Absolutely. already filled. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> and Amen. it's such a privilege to mm -hmm. to have our listeners and our, our viewers on our Facebook platform, mm -hmm. as well as those who listen via radio. It's, it's an honor. If I can tell you, there are some relatives of mine mm. um, I cannot tell you uh, for security purposes I cannot tell you the type of work that they do but I can tell you they are in the most remote places in Africa mm. and mm. they're listening to wow. to Agape Radio they're listening wow. to God and Me Time um, 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning Absolutely. this is their breakfast mm. fellowship and this is um, some of them have described it to me that this is their weekly church service wow. Those wow. who are unable to attend in-person services. Absolutely. Yeah. So God is great. So the the reach and the and the and the and the extent, mm. the magnitude of this platform is beyond words. It's mm. you you cannot describe it. It will sound like you are exaggerating mm. if you try to explain Absolutely. the reach of this of this platform, this mm. radio station. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And we have Ricardo Hedolt Whitboy. She says, good morning, Pastor. Have Praise. a blessed day. Wow. May I, sir, that is my my very own 
school principal. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's Mrs. Uh, Kadi Vidboy. Oh yes, um, Mrs. Ricarda Gedeld Vidboy. She is the the principal of one of the schools mm. where I regularly minister. I minister the word there uh, on a regular basis. I I also do um, impartation with their leaders, mm. their prefects and their staff. I take the prefects on camps mm. whenever I'm requested wow. um, and on retreats and I and I call those retreats advances mm. because the retreat means a step back Absolutely. and advance means a step forward. Mm. So, mm. so Mrs. Vidboy, my dearly beloved principal, I, I, I honor you, ma'am, and uh, 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 watch God. Watch what God will do on Wednesday. Mm. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So if, if this is your first time, yes, you sir. know, to tune in into the God and me time, you know, you are set for an intimate time with God. Oh, yes. And, you know, intimate time with the word of God. Oh, yes. The, and the word of God brings life. Oh, every, yes, sir. Every place where the word of God, Jesus said in his word, mm. You know, my these words, my words are life. Mm, yes, they are sir. spirit and life. Yes, yes, so sir. we believe that at the end of this session, you will be infused with Oh, life. yes. You oh, are going to be oh, yes. filled with the spirit of God. Oh, yes. And you're going to walk in dimensions that you've not experienced before. Oh, yes, I indeed. believe and I trust God. Oh yes, awesome. indeed, sir. Oh, yes, Over indeed. to you, Pastor. Thank you so much, uh, uh, sir. If you would... Uh, um, just honor us this morning by by inviting the presence of the Lord, uh -huh. and then we're gonna go to our Bibles. We're gonna go to we're gonna dovetail between uh, Luke chapter eleven mm -hmm. and Matthew chapter six. Um, there's a very short thought mm -hmm. that we would like to expand upon. We would like to uh, do an expose, an exposition on a very short thought, mm -hmm. but we would like to unpack mm -hmm. that thought so that it can mm -hmm. make more sense for. For all of us. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's mm. let's pray. Father, we thank you so much oh, yes, because Lord. your word says that where two or three are gathered together in your name, yes, Lord. there you are in the midst. And we believe, Lord, that you are here. Oh, you yes, are Lord. here to answer prayers. You are here to touch people's lives. Oh, yes, Lord. You are here to have intimate moments, mm -hmm. times where you're going to confirm your love upon those who are listening and those who might listen to this broadcast even mm. later. Lord yes, Jesus, Lord. that you're going to minister to them oh, in yes, person yes, because Father. you know them by name. They're yes, yours. You've called all of us out. Mm. Lord, we are yours. We are the ecclesia. Oh, they yes, called Lord. out once. We belong to you. Mm. And we just want to magnify you. We acknowledge you. You yes, are Lord. the Lord of lords and you are the King yes, of kings. We give you glory. Lord Jesus, take mm. your place. Be enthroned on our praises. Yes, Lord. Even now, O oh Lord, as we come to delve into your word, oh, yes, I pray Lord. that you minister to all of us. O oh, God mm. Almighty, all of us at the point of our needs. In mm. Jesus' name we do pray. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen and amen indeed. Uh, man of God, wow, what an awesome presence we have uh, in this studio um, mm. at this time. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that we will be richly blessed uh, after the session, I believe that we will leave the session informed, mm. inspired, and also motivated mm. to go out there and to be mm. what God intends us mm -hmm. to be. I believe that is the entire, that should be the entire pursuit mm. that we engage upon as we live our lives uh, on a daily basis to try and be the full personification or the full expression of that which God intends for us to be. Mm. Um, if you would, sir, mm. I would like to ask you if we could go to to the Gospel of Luke uh, chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. And uh, in Luke chapter 11, we find a very interesting request being made by the disciples mm -hmm. um you know if you if you look at jesus the person mm -hmm. jesus um you look at jesus who carried the full expression of god mm -hmm. in that he is christ the christ mm -hmm. the anointed one the christos in greek mm -hmm. if you look at such a personification of god incarnation of god god in human flesh, you could be tempted 
to ask him many things. Mm. But I find that the disciples made a very interesting request. Mm. So, mm. And they asked him for one thing, which which appeared to be simple and elementary, but it was actually very deep. Mm. If you if you delve into the the depth, or and 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 if you really investigate the implications mm. of what they asked him for, mm. absolutely. <laughs> um, and uh, I I find that um, popular culture. Popular culture has relegated this to a Sunday school activity mm -hmm. where in many, and I'm, I'm treading carefully um, because I don't want to generalize and uh, uh, be offensive or be overly or unnecessarily um, controversial. Mm -hmm. But we find that many people have relegated this to a Sunday school activity. And I believe it is it has its pros and it has its cons mm. to have this in Sunday school because you you are introducing children to the tenets of our faith. Mm. You are you are introducing them to the pillars upon which our faith stand. And the pillars upon which our faith stand is worship, uh, prayer, uh, gathering. Mm. It's, it's, so 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 you need to introduce prayer to them, but this is not a Sunday school mm. prayer mm. per se it's mm. not a children's prayer per se we mm. we teach this to our children because we want to introduce them to prayer as an institution mm. but i believe that it holds immense value mm. for us as adults mm. if we would just ask the lord to just unveil our spiritual eyes and and just to open up our our minds to the idea that 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 there is so much that we can gain from from what is popularly known mm. as the 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 lord's prayer mm. um, or the our father prayer mm. now i am not trying to exalt myself above the the bible editors because mm. the chapters mm. Mm. And the headings in our Bibles are, are added mm -hmm. by editors. Mm -hmm. right? um, it, it is translated from a, a original scroll mm. that is an ongoing document. It, it is not devised into chapters. So what the editors did is they, they, they categorized certain things together so for example where jesus would speak about love mm. they would they would categorize that into a portion where paul would speak about love they would say okay this is all about love so first corinthians chapter 13 from verse 1 to 13 mm. must be a chapter that must be together and mm. we're going to title that love mm -hmm. but at those 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 captions mm -hmm. and, and 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 those headings mm. were not originally there mm. it, 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 we have the privilege and thank god for these educated people multilingual people mm. who know mm. the hebrew who know the greek who know the latin who know the aramaic they 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 they, they, they helped us a lot mm. um to to facilitate um uh, structure mm. uh in 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 the scriptures but we need to understand that 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 god didn't call this let's say jesus didn't call this mm. the our father prayer mm. or mm. jesus didn't call this the lord's prayer mm. somebody else who came afterwards and mm. who was duly qualified mm. did the editing and did um the uh publishing and they came up with the verse numbers the chapter numbers mm. the headings the titles you mm. know so i would like to Unofficially, mm -hmm. unofficially challenge the title of this prayer okay. <laughs> <laughs> because I believe that that this prayer is more aptly titled or could be more aptly titled the disciples prayer mm -hmm. because the scripture says, I think it's Luke chapter 11 and I think it's verse 1 sir, where it says that they came to Jesus, mm -hmm. his disciples and they asked him something. If you would, um, you may ask, say, if you could just read the request, mm. uh, Luke chapter 11, mm -hmm. verse 1. Yes, sir. And then it says, And it came to pass that as he was praying mm -hmm. in a certain place, mm -hmm. when he ceased, mm -hmm. one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. 
All right. Mm. Immediately from that verse, I, I, I um, assume, and I, I have a strong informed assumption. Mm. Mm. I assume that it was a disciple who requested Jesus to teach the disciples to pray. Mm. I also gather from that verse that that these disciples were aware that John the Baptist also taught his mm. disciples mm. to pray. Mm. Um, he instructed them on the topic of prayer. So then the reply of Jesus would be to acquiesce to this request mm. Mm. that you want me to teach you to pray, so this is what I'm teaching you. To pray. Mm -hmm. Immediately that makes it mm. the prayer of the disciples. Mm, absolutely. Uh, not the Lord's prayer. Mm. Not the Our Father <laughs> prayer. <laughs> the disciples' mm. prayer. Because mm. a disciple requested it. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful that uh, it was never revealed who the disciple was. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says one of his disciples mm. requested. I believe that if the name of the disciple was mentioned, we would, we would be sitting with a huge theological mm. problem mm. because there would be some of us who would worship that disciple. Uh, just as uh, in the Old Testament when God instructed Moses mm. to create a serpent. brass serpent yeah. mm. and uh, uh, whoever looked to it would receive their healing. But later in the book of Chronicles, we find that a cult had developed around the brass serpent. Yeah. And they were worshipping the brass serpent. Mm. They were worshipping the created thing instead mm. of the creator. Mm. And according to Romans chapter 1, God has a problem with that, mm. with people who forsake the worship of the creator to mm. focus on the creation. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful that this disciple was never identified mm. because we might have elevated that person to an undue position where we give reverence to the person instead of giving reverence to God. Mm -hmm. And also we would have we would have become fans mm. of that disciple and the full word for fans is fanatics mm. and the word fanatic means crazy <laughs> you know <laughs> so we would have been mad about that person instead of worshiping god mm. so please don't call yourself a fan anymore <laughs> you are actually telling me that you have lost your mind <laughs> but anyway let's not go into that <laughs> uh, yeah the disciple came to jesus mm. and said please teach us how to pray they, they were in a, in a place where they heard mm. Jesus praying. The Bible says as soon as he ceased his prayer, mm. one of the disciples asked him after he prayed in a certain place, this person asked, please teach us mm. how to pray as well. Mm. I believe that the reason why they asked him, teach us how to pray is because they heard a totally different form of prayer than what they have been used to. Um, we must understand that these disciples were practicing Jews. Mm. They were practicing uh, the religion of the Israelites. Mm. They had the temple of uh, the second temple. The temple mm. of Solomon was destroyed. They had the Herod. second mm. temple, temple of Herod of mm. the Edomite. Yes. Mm. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, they were, they were worshipping. Mm. There were prayers going up daily in the temple. There were morning, mm. afternoon and evening prayers. Mm. Mm. Morning, afternoon and evening sacrifices. Sure. So, so prayer was part of their life. Mm. But they heard Jesus praying completely something else that they never, never heard, heard uh -huh. in their lives before. Mm. And uh, I believe that when Jesus taught them how to pray, mm. the very next verse, mm -hmm. it introduces us to the first thing that shocked them. Oof. And that is the, <laughs> the thing that I would like to focus on. <laughs> yes. Because in Luke chapter 11, verse 2, mm. Jesus says to them, When you... Mm -hmm. uh, so if you would honor us by reading it. Uh, the, the whole verse. Uh, verse 2. Yes, okay. please. Sir. And it says this. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, yeah. When ye pray, uh -huh. say, Our Father, uh -huh. which art in heaven, uh -huh. hallowed be thy name. Mm -hmm. Thy kingdom come, mm -hmm. thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Praise God. I believe that when they heard Jesus pray, they heard him, first of all, addressing God. Mm. 
and they heard, but this is not what we are used to. Mm-hmm. Because this rabbi, mm. and rabbi is their leader, mm. pastor, priest, mm. their, their, their religious leader. Mm. Ra- this rabbi isn't praying like the other rabbis. Mm. Because the other rabbis that they were, u- that they were used to in the mm. temple, mm. people like Nicodemus and some others, mm-hmm. even people like Caiaphas who was the high priest, mm. they prayed in the manner mm. that Old Testament patriarchs mm. prayed. Mm. They prayed addressing God by His attributes mm. and His titles. Mm. And they, they prayed and they would call on, for example, Genesis chapter 14, mm. when there was a prayer, mm. Abraham and Melchizedek prayed. Mm. The prayer was to the Most High God, mm. to God the Most High Creator. Mm. When Daniel prayed, he said, O Lord God, Creator of heaven and earth. Mm. When Abraham prayed, O Lord Elohim creator Mm. Um, all of them the Old Testament saints they Mm. prayed and they gave him immense respect Mm. Mm. but they prayed to a God Mm. Mm. they prayed to a deity Mm. they prayed to a supreme spiritual being Mm. and here was Jesus with his disciples and Jesus prays and Mm. please allow me to paraphrase please give me Poetic license. (laughs) Jesus prays and he starts and he says, Daddy. Mm -hmm. And the people, the disciples are, Daddy. Mm. How can you call him Abba? Mm. Abba means father. Mm. Daddy. Mm. In the Aramaic, Abba Un. Mm. Our father. Mm. And to them, it was the shock of their lifetime. Mm. Because they never knew God. As father, they knew him as creator, Mm. Elohim, Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, Mm. Uh, Elohim who created the heavens and the earth. Mm. They knew him as he introduced himself to Moses, Mm. Ahaya, Asher, Ahaya, the I am who I am. Mm. They knew him as he introduced himself to Abraham, Mm -hmm. Jehovah, Rapha. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah, like he introduced himself to Moses in the desert, Jehovah Nisi, the way he introduced himself to Jacob, Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah meaning God's covenant name, the self-existent one Mm -hmm. who is constantly revealing himself to his people. Mm -hmm. And they knew him as that. Mm. It's like, it's like someone coming to church mm. and I, I'm, try, I'm trying to, to make this plain and clear. Mm. It's like, for example, and, I, and unfortunately I need to use myself now as, as a, an example. Mm. Um, if my children come to church and let's say your children mm. come to church, your children mm. will come and greet me and say, uh, we greet you, Pastor, or mm. we greet you, Apostle, or we greet you, whatever title they know me as mm. in terms of my office, um, mm. office mm. or the mantle that they perceive upon mm. my life. Mm. <laughs> but my children will come and they will greet the Pastor, Apostle, Prophet, whatever he is, as Daddy. Mm. 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 They mm. know me as Dad, Father. <laughs> it would be inappropriate for Mm. someone to come and say, let's say John is the pastor. Mm. It's inappropriate for someone to come and say, hi, John, Mm. in church. Mm. The the expectation is Mm. um, pastor. But John's son or children would not feel the pressure to call him pastor. Mm. They Mm. would call him daddy, father. Mm. And that is the greatest revolution that Jesus brought onto the scene mm-hmm. where in literal terms mm. the great creator of the universe the king of mm. every seen and unseen realm can now be addressed as Abba Un wow. 
our father. Mm, mm. And I believe that was a culture shock mm, mm. to the Absolutely. disciples because who how can this man call mm. Yahweh his father, mm. Jehovah his father, mm. the, the, the great I am his father. Mm. And what made it worse, mm. Jesus went one step further. Mm. He said to them, when you pray, mm -hmm. when you stand praying, <laughs> this is how you should pray. Wow. And this is what you should say. Our Father. Which means now it is not only this perfect man, mm. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this perfect man, mm. this miraculous, wondrous mm. um, man who does miracles, who raises the dead, mm. who walks on water. It's not only him mm. who has the authority mm -hmm. to call God his father. He tells his disciples, when you pray. You must also say daddy. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. <laughs> and they, they were shocked a minute ago when he called God daddy. Mm. Now they are being instructed, you must call him daddy. Sure. And I believe that Jesus was teaching them mm. about a change in dispensation. Wow. Where God, in the traditional theological sense, mm. God is the creator. Mm. But Jesus introduced him to a different side of God. Mm. Father in mm. creation. Not mm. just creator, mm. but father in creation. Mm. Father implies mm. a couple of things. Mm. <laughs> mm. 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 Because I believe, and I believe it would make sense if we approach it this way. Mm. If we say that this prayer was a breath of fresh air mm. Mm -hmm. to the disciples, mm. It was something totally mm. new to them. And, and if it was a breath of fresh air, mm. then let us, let us approach it this morning as air. Mm. And let's, let's use the acronym of air mm. To, mm. to describe the implications mm. Mm -hmm. of this prayer. The first thing that calling somebody father mm. implies is it implies access mm. to this person. If, you're, if, 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 if there is a certain president in the world uh, who you need to see, mm. you need to make a, an appointment. Mm. Mm. But if that president's son or daughter mm. comes to the uh, PA, mm -hmm. personal assistant, and tells him, I want to see my dad quickly. Mm. If there is a good father, mm. the child will always be squeezed in. Mm, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> he will never tell mm. his PA, tell the child to make an appointment. Uh -uh. Mm, mm. Because that is my child. Mm. That person has access to me mm -hmm. that other people do not necessarily enjoy. Uh, mm, absolutely. Mm. <laughs> so when God, when Jesus said, mm. this is how you pray, call him daddy. Sure. Call him Abba. Call him Abba is the Aramaic name for for, for father. Mm. Call him Abba Un, which mm. means our father or father of us. Mm. Abba Un. Mm. That implies that we have access wow. to God. Mm. Now that was something totally taboo mm. in the old dispensation, mm. in the Old Testament. Because just to make it very short, you can you can do some research on your own. Mm. You go to Leviticus chapter 23 mm. in the Bible. You read there about the seven feasts of mm. the Lord. Mm. You read there that at the end of the year, on a certain day, there is a certain feast called the Day of Atonement. Mm. The, the, it's called in the Jewish Yom Kippur, the mm. Day of Atonement. Mm. On the Day of Atonement, the, the high priest mm. was allowed once only for the entire year one one day out of 365 days mm. to enter mm. into the actual presence of god not the outer court of the tabernacle which was outside not mm. the not the inner court the mm. holy place mm. that he could go into day by day mm. but now the holy of holies the the inner place where the where the where the the, the ark of the covenant was mm. and where the actual shekinah mm. presence of god the mm. glory of god the light that was upon that ark of the covenant mm. was was the the the, the visible 
and tangible. It was like a fluorescent light shining. Mm. They could oh. see there's God. Mm. The light is mm. shining. Wow. He was only allowed once a year to go into that place. And then it was so dangerous for him to go into that place because he had to now go in and to make atonement. He had to do some sacrifices and mm. present the blood and sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat. Mm. And I really don't have time to go into all of that. Mm. But we, we, we will at some time when mm. the Lord allows us. Mm. But, but he, it was so dangerous that if he was impure or if he himself was not right with God, mm. he would drop dead. In there, so 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 people outside held a rope mm. on the outside, mm. and there were bells attached to his to his cloak. Mm. So if they hear the bells are stopping, they would know mm. the guy dropped dead, and oh, they would wow. pull the rope wow. and pull him out of the presence of God. Mm. You know? so, so, so it 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 was not something that you could go into. Mm. The presence of God was mm. so holy, mm. and still remains so holy that you cannot go in. But Jesus here mm. does something that blew their minds. Oh. He says, this is your daddy. You can go to him anytime. Wow. You can enter his presence anytime. Mm. And God confirmed it. Mm. Because, because when Jesus died mm. after this, mm. three years after this, mm. when he died, mm. the Bible says the curtain, mm. it was called the veil mm. in mm. the temple that separated the holy place from the most holy place was torn into mm, mm. and that signified that the separation mm. between God and man has now been removed wow. because of the, the sacrifice of Jesus. Mm. And when he teaches them to pray our father, mm. he's pointing them ahead and telling them there will be a day mm. when mm. that curtain will be torn sure, sure. and you will have the ability mm. to enter in. So he tells them to pray our Father, mm. and the very title of call, calling God your Father mm. implies a paradigm shift mm -hmm. that this is something completely new. So, so, so when he calls him Father, uh, he says to his disciples, his disciples that he has privileged access mm. to God. Mm. Mm. And then he tells them, you must also pray like this. Mm. Mm. Which means that, listen closely, my dear listener, which means that God mm. Mm. sees you mm. as his son or his daughter. And God sees himself as your father because Jesus being God in the flesh, teaching us to pray to God, mm -hmm. calling God Father, mm -hmm. tells us that God already <laughs> recognizes us as his children mm -hmm. and recognizes himself mm -hmm. as our Father. I want us, sir, um, if we, if we, just to, just to drive home this point, sir, because mm. this is so pertinent mm. for us to understand this. If, 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 if in your Bible there, sir, if you would be kind enough to, to page to, to, to Luke chapter three, Luke three. and uh, yes, sir, and if you read the final verse in Luke chapter three, the very last verse. Sir. Okay, all right, Luke three verse thirty-eight. Yes, sir. And then it says, "Which was the son of Enos." Yeah. Which was the son of Seth, yeah. which was the son of Adam, yeah. which was the son of God. Okay, what does it say? Okay. It says that this person was the son of this person, this person was the son of this person, and then Enosh was the son of Seth, and mm -hmm. Seth was the son of Adam, mm -hmm. and Adam was who? The son, the son of, of who? God. Adam was who? The son of God. Adam, not Jesus. Adam. 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 Okay. <laughs> so, 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 Jesus is bringing to the understanding an ancient reality. Mm, mm. God saw himself mm. as Adam's father. Wow. Not as Adam's God. Mm. All the, the, the saints, mm -hmm. the patriarchs, mm -hmm. with all the honor and respect that is due to them, mm -hmm. Because of their reverence to God, mm. their respect, mm. worship, mm. they missed something very important. Mm. Mm. Because Jesus here 
allows Dr. Luke to write a, a genealogy. Mm, mm, mm. And in the genealogy, it is revealed that, that as Enosh was the son of Seth, mm. and Seth was the son of, e of, of Adam, mm. because Seth was the brother of Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. The third one was born mm -hmm. after Cain killed Abel. Mm -hmm. And then Adam and then Eve said, I received a man mm -hmm. uh, instead of the one who was killed. His name was Seth. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and according to rabbinical tradition, he was the splitting image of Adam. He looked exactly like wow. his father. Mm, 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 mm. And Adam here is addressed as the son of God. So, 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 if Adam here is addressed as the son of God, mm. what does that make you? And what does that make me? Wow. Does that not make us sons mm. of God mm. being born from the line of Adam? Mm. Mm. Does that not make us sons? And Jesus was bringing the spiritual mm. confirmation of a natural reality mm. that we are from we are all descended mm. from adam mm. so if adam was the son of god we are all sons mm. of mm. god so jesus brings this prayer mm. and to take their minds back that yay you are not merely his servants mm. you are not merely his followers you are his family mm. Mm. god is very serious about family mm, mm. that is why he reveals himself mm. as a family mm, mm, god mm. reveals himself as a father and a son wow that is a family mm, absolutely mm. <laughs> so he is interested in family mm. he reveals himself as our father which means we are his sons mm. if we look at god like this we can say yeah mm. he is one Mm. Yeah. Mm. But if we look at God like this from this perspective, <laughs> Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, mm. one but three, mm. family, mm. same surname, mm. different names, mm. same surname, mm. different names, mm. <laughs> one God, but three manifestations, mm. family, mm -hmm. we are God's family, Jesus was bringing to the mind of the disciples, yay, mm. you are family, mm. now, mm. now, in the Afrikaans language, there's a very uh, interesting saying, mm, mm. Um, a popular saying, and people usually use it when they want to gain some sort of advantage. Mm, okay. the, 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 the saying is, in Afrikaans, it goes like this, Blood is thicker as water. Right. Blood is oh, thicker, thicker than water. water. Mm. Or another version of it, Blood. Blood crawls where it is unable to walk. Mm. What they're actually saying by that saying that there are certain things that your family are entitled to that other people are not entitled mm. to. Mm. Your family is entitled to much more. Uh, it's much easier for your family to get money from you mm, <laughs> than other people would get money. <laughs> because at the end of the day, they wouldn't give you a good reason. Mm. The only reason they would give you why you are obliged to help them is we are family. <laughs> <laughs> Not I have given you something mm. or you owe me. We mm. are family. Mm. Jesus is telling us we are family with God. Mm. If therefore we are family with God, why would we think that we do not deserve mm. to receive things <laughs> mm, from him? Mm. <laughs> from him. Mm. Because we have access to him. Mm. Remember I said the acronym that I want to use is A. Mm. A-I-R. A, we have access to him. The I, sir, is that the title father mm. um, presupposes or, or intimates mm. intimacy. Mm. Mm. It, it denotes intimacy. Mm. Mm. Um, when somebody is your father, mm. you love him. Mm. And he loves you. Mm. When somebody is your father, uh, especially the small children, I've, I've, I, I have this um, nephew, mm. my sister's baby, mm. yeah, right? When, 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 when his father is mm. an evangelist in our local ministry, Evangelist Jackson, mm. uh, my sister Rita. 
has this baby. Baby's name is Caleb. Mm. Baby is now three. He's no longer a baby, but uh, he's still <laughs> our baby in the family. <laughs> when his father comes home from work, mm. he, 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 he hears his father's vehicle at the gate. Mm -hmm. He runs to the gate. Mm. And uh, daddy, daddy, daddy mm. gets into the bucky at the gate. Mm. And just a short distance, about 20 meters, drives into the, into the yard with the father. Mm. But he, he enjoys that ride with the father in. Mm -hmm. He feels that he, uh, he can ride because this is his father. Mm. When he talks about the bucky, he says, my bucky. Uh -huh. he, he never bought a bucky, <laughs> but he says it's his bucky. You know, he's already saying what, what belongs to his father his. is his. Wow, wow. And then when his father gets out of the bucket, I've, I've observed him. Mm. Hello, daddy. And the father would ask him, Caleb, how are you? And then he would answer, I'm fine. Thank you, daddy. And he wouldn't even answer us back. How are you? He would mm. say, I'm fine. Thank you, daddy. And then he would say, give a phone. <laughs> 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 he would claim his father's phone. He's three years old. He, he did this ever since he was two. He was like one year and eight months or two. And he started to do this thing. Wow. He claims his father's phone, he goes onto YouTube <laughs> and he watches cartoons <laughs> and he sits down and he laughs at the cartoon. <laughs> he doesn't have data, his father's got mm. data. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have Wi-Fi, his father pays for Wi-Fi. Mm. He doesn't have a handset, but when he sees his father, he says, give me my phone. <laughs> if... His mother comes and mm. takes the phone away from him or mm. the father mm. needs mm. to phone somebody. Mm. He comes mm. to me mm. and he cries and he says, Uncle, they took my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Two years old. They took my phone. He's, he's saying in actual fact, what belongs to them belongs to me. Yeah. They, he's actually saying they are my employees. Mm. They are working for me. <laughs> <laughs> God mm. is our Father. Amen. Jesus mm. was trying to hit home mm. this mm. point and hammer this point, mm. this reality. Mm. God is our Father, which means in the eyes of God, there are certain things we are entitled mm. to Hallelujah. because mm. of the fact that He's our Father. Mm. We have access to Him. Mm. Secondly, there's intimacy. James chapter 4 verse 8, mm. uh, the scripture that I mentioned earlier mm. says, come near to God mm -hmm. and it will come near to you. Mm. Intimacy. Mm. Mm. We don't only have access to his presence, but more importantly, mm -hmm. we have an invitation. Not just access. And I'm going to say that two or three times so that it can dawn on us. I don't just have access. Mm. I have an invitation. I don't just have access. Come near to God and he will come near to you. I don't only have access, but I have an invitation. Wow. <laughs> Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me, all you are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. Come near to God. Who's mm -hmm. God? Your father. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have access to him. Hallelujah. You can go to him, but he's calling you. He wants you to come. Mm -hmm. He says, Come. Mm. Now, God wants to share his heart with us. Mm. And he wants to share in our pain and our joys and everything that we mm. go through. Mm. He says, come to me. Mm. I want to encourage somebody who feels alone. Mm. That, that, that as long as you have a father, mm. you are never alone. Hallelujah. There is a, a, an, an analogy or a illustration that I read somewhere some time ago, a couple of years ago, mm. where this father, there was this young man who was a minister mm. and he went to seminary and after going to seminary, he went out on mission trips mm. and he would stay for extended periods in foreign lands, mm. underdeveloped countries. And the the the, the illustration says that when his father mm. said bye-bye to him, mm. his father held him by the shoulders mm. and told him, listen closely to this. Mm. Wherever you are, mm. whatever you need, mm. I want you to know you have a father. Wow. Call me. Mm. 
Mm. Wherever you are, whatever you need, you have a father. Father, our father, denotes access and also in standing invitation. Jesus reminds us of the Old Testament scripture where God says through his prophet, Jeremiah 33 and verse 3, mm. call upon me and I will answer you, guarantee. Call upon me, invitation, I will answer you, mm. guarantee from the Father and mm. I will show you great things mm. and mighty things mm -hmm. that you have not known. Mm. David in Psalms 50 verse 15 mm. Call upon me in the day of your trouble mm. and I will answer you, says the Lord, mm. and you must come back and praise me. We have a standing invitation. We have a open invitation. I want to encourage you. Mm. Call upon God. He will never be too busy. He will never be too far away. He will never tell you um, that you have drifted too far away from him. He is always available mm, mm, mm. for somebody who calls. Hallelujah. Jesus illustrates this when he tells us the story of the lost son. Mm. And as the son was in the pigsty, mm. in the worst place, mm. at the lowest point of his life, mm. the, fa the son remembered the father. And he made a decision. He said, and I will rise. Luke chapter 15, verse 20. I will rise and I will go to my father. You have a father. Mm. You might be stuck in a life of addiction. Mm. You might be stuck in a life of crime. You might not be where you know you are supposed to be. You might be stuck in the worst type of lifestyle that you could ever have imagined. Mm. Listen closely what Jesus says. Mm. He says mm. when the when the prodigal son, the lost son, the youngest son mm -hmm. came to his senses, he said to himself, I will rise up and I will go to my father. Listen closely. Even though the son was lost, mm. the father remained the father. I want to tell you that if you and I get lost, our father does not get lost. We are the ones who get lost, but mm. our father mm. remains on point in position. He remains our father. He remains waiting on our return. He remains with open arms, with an open invitation. Come unto me, my son and my daughter. Listen, the devil will tell you about your symptoms. Your symptoms do not define you. You might be a drug addict. Let me let 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 let, let, let me become let me become a bit a bit rash, mm. a bit brash. Mm. You might be high on drugs right now. Mm. You might be in prostitution right now. Mm. You might be in crime right now. That doesn't change your father. Yeah. That doesn't change your father's mm. attitude mm. towards mm. you. Mm. That doesn't change your father's heart mm. towards you. The Bible says when the Apostle Paul clarifies it, he uses the following words. He says, God will not deny himself. Mm. We might become unfaithful, but he remains faithful. We have a faithful father. There's a song, a wonderful worship song. Uh, that I love so much. I love to listen to it every now and then. Mm. The title, or oh, oh, let's say the lyrics of the song says, You're a good, good father. Mm. That's who you are. That's who you are. Mm. That's who you are. And then it says, And I'm loved by you. Ooh. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. When Jesus taught them to pray, our father mm. remember prayer mm. is defined as calling out to god he was telling them call your daddy mm. Mm. i want to mm. tell somebody if you are in a situation of sickness call your daddy if you are in a situation of financial pressure call on your daddy if you are in a situation where you are down and out Call on your daddy. He is faithful. You are never too low and never too far and never too far removed from him. The Bible says, uh, Isaiah 59, the ear of the Lord is not too hard. The arm of the Lord is not too short. He wants us to call upon him. Call your daddy. 
Some children do not have a relationship with their fathers, earthly fathers. Some mm. earthly fathers do not have a relationship with their children. But let me tell you, our Heavenly Father will never break off His relationship ah, with yes, us. Mm. He is faithful. Mm. Mm. I was saying that the Father, our Father, mm. implies certain things. And I said, this prayer was a breath of fresh air mm. to the disciples. And then we define the air mm. as a access, mm -hmm. as I, uh, intimacy, mm -hmm. standing invitation. Mm -hmm. And then there's another dimension mm -hmm. of air, the mm -hmm. R, mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be out of fellowship with your father, mm -hmm. but you can never be out of relationship. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if you've ever seen a mama mm -hmm. Going to court, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a son has killed somebody, a son has raped somebody, a son has done despicable things. The mother comes to the court, she never told the child to do that wrong or to steal or to do a cash and transit robbery or to kill people, but she says, I'm coming to support my son. He, she does not say, I'm coming to support the cash and transit robber. She doesn't say, I'm coming to support the murderer. She doesn't say, I'm coming to support the rapist. She says, I'm coming to support my son. That person is out of fellowship, doing things that the parent never taught that person to do. Mm. But that person remains in relationship. Mm. Relationship cannot be broken. Fellowship can be broken, yes. You can be out of touch. You can be far removed emotionally. Mm. But your status, the status of your relationship, who is this person to you? My son. Mm. Who is mm. this person to you? My father. Wow. God says, even when the boy was in the pigsty, he knew at home there is somebody who stands in the relationship to me as my father. And I am his son. I want to I wanna remind somebody that the Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. It's one of my favorite scriptures. It's so beautiful. It is so touching. It is so reassuring. It says, see what great a love the Father has lavished on us. Listen closely, not God. Not see what great love God has lavished on us. See what great love the Father has lavished on us. That we should be called children of God. The Father loves us so much that we are called children of God. Wow. <laughs> Relationship. Romans chapter 8 and verse 16 brings the spiritual dimension. It says the spirit himself mm. bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Mm. We are his children. He's our daddy. That means we belong to him. We are his. I want somebody this morning to take a breath of fresh air and to let go of, of the feelings of guilt and condemnation because you might have gossiped he doesn't call you the gossiper he calls you his child you might have stolen he doesn't call you the thief he calls you his child look what greater love the father has lavished upon us that we are now called the sons or the children of God we are his children because uh, how do you know you are his child you have access to him you have intimacy with him. There's an invitation and you have a relationship with him. A relationship cannot be broken. Listen, earthly relationships, any, let's say any other relationship mm. can be broken. Today, myself and John, we are friends. Mm. Tomorrow, the devil jumps into Mark's mind mm. to fight against John. And somebody asks you, but hey, you used to be like this with John. Mm. What's the problem? Then now I'm no longer friends with John. Mm. Touch wood, it will not happen. But that those are the type of, that relationship is now broken. Mm. Mr. Mr. 
Mr. Johnson mm. meets Miss Peterson, mm. and they like one another. They become engaged. Mm. They fall in love. They become married. Mm. After a couple of years of marriage, they go through some tumultuous moments. They mm. get divorced, mm. and mm. then somebody asks Mr. Johnson, "Where is your wife?" "No, she's no longer my wife. Mm. We are divorced. Mm. That relationship is broken." Mm. But have you ever heard of somebody saying, saying legitimately saying, "That is legally no longer my father. There's no such thing." The, the, that is legally no longer my mother. There is no such thing. Your relationship with our father mm. can never be broken. Oh. What do we have because of our father? The Bible says uh, so beautifully in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 10. Mm. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. We have protection. Mm. Because we have access to the strong tower. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. We we have protection because we have intimacy with him. Mm. Daniel chapter 4. Mm. Have you not thrown three men into the fire? Mm. Why do I say four <laughs> men walking around and conversing <laughs> in the fire? In the fire? <laughs> Intimacy. There was a connection. Mm. He mm. joined them in the fire. Mm. And he walked with them in the fire. And he spoke with them in the fire. Hallelujah. They had intimacy. Oh, hallelujah. In the midst of the fire. I want to tell you that no matter how hot your fire becomes, mm. God will never jump ship. Hallelujah. <laughs> your fire will not scare God. God will remain with you in that fire and he will turn down the, the, the heat of that fire. Mm. And uh, God has the remote control for any fire mm. to turn mm. it down. Hallelujah. He is with you. Mm. He will sustain you in the mm. midst of that fire. Mm. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 3 and verse 17, when Jesus Christ was baptized by John the Baptist in the River Jordan, mm. The Bible says, and immediately the clouds changed mm -hmm. and uh, there was a light shining mm -hmm. uh, and the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus as a dove, mm -hmm. not in the shape of a dove, as a dove, gently like a dove, mm -hmm. <laughs> not in the shape of a dove, <laughs> as a dove. A dove is gentle mm -hmm. and graceful, came, come down upon him, rested upon him. John said, I heard from God, the one on whom you see the Spirit come down and rest on him and remain on him. That is the one. Mm. And a voice spoke out of heaven. Mm, mm, a mm. voice said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. This is my, remember this, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And the Bible says immediately afterwards, mm. Matthew chapter 4, Jesus was led into the desert mm. to be tempted by mm. the enemy. Mm. Mm. And mm. I want you to, 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 to see how Satan mm. operates. Mm. He, he, he removes one word from a sentence mm. to tell you a big lie, mm -hmm. to keep you in bondage for the rest of your life. Mm. One word. Mm. It, not a sentence, not a paragraph, mm. one word. Mm. 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 God said, Matthew 3, 17, This is my beloved mm. son. Mm. That is how mm. God announced him mm. and introduced him. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Mm. Listen to him. Matthew chapter 4, Satan comes to Jesus mm. and he approaches him like this. Mm. After 40 days, of fasting in the desert and after he became desperately hungry mm. the enemy comes to him and says if you are the son of God tell these stones to become bread mm. so that you can eat because you are hungry mm -hmm. if you are the son of God jump down from this building Mm. And from this mountain, because the angels will carry you. If you are the son of God, God has just a few days ago said, this is my beloved 
Mm, mm, mm. Satan takes away that word beloved. Mm, 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 mm. It tells me that Satan was trying to convince Jesus that God has deserted him mm, in the desert mm. and that he is no longer loved by God. Mm. There are people listening to us this morning who have been tempted to believe the lie of the mm. enemy that because you are in a certain season of your life, mm. you are no longer loved by God. Oh. But God says, I must tell you this morning, mm. for God so loved the world. Not just the Pentecostals, not just the Catholics, not just the Charismatics, mm. not just the Baptists, not just the Jews. For mm. God so loved the world. You are loved by God. You are part of the world. You are in the world. God so loved the entire world. Look what a great love the Father has showed us that we are now called the children of God. You are loved. You are not merely a son. You are a beloved son. Adam, 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 according to Luke chapter 3 verse 38 was the son of God. Mm. And according to Genesis chapter 3 verse 8, every single day God came at a certain time and had a date mm. with Adam mm. and Eve. Mm. He loved them. Mm. You don't have a daily date with someone that you don't love. <laughs> he, 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 he was their beloved children. Mm. God is telling us in effect that when I mm. told, mm. when I allowed Jesus mm. to teach you to pray our Father, mm -hmm. It was not just a small thing, mm. a, 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 a elementary thing, mm. Mm. Uh, uh, like some of us relegated to a Sunday school activity. Mm. 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 It was something good. Mm. It was something great. Right. It is so loaded. Mm. The revelation is so loaded that due to the passing of time, I'm, I'm, I'm closing down mm. and we will continue. But, but, but. The crux of the matter, the gist of the matter is that we have access to His presence. Mm. We have intimate fellowship with the living God, mm. the Creator. Mm. Our relationship with Him is sealed in, and cemented because our Father means that we have identity uh, in Christ. We know who we are. And, and it transformed the nature of our relationship with an oath from an Old Testament God to a New Testament Father. Our God wants us to know that according to Romans chapter 8, nothing will be able to separate us from the love of who? God in Christ Jesus. Why? Because nothing can separate mm. the Standing mm. between a son and a father. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. You can have a naughty child, it's your child. You can have a naughty son, it's your son. You can have a naughty daughter, it's your son. It will remain your daughter. It will remain your son. I read the other day, I read on Facebook, not on Facebook, on the internet somewhere. Mm. I, I read an article, mm. it's coming to mind now. A 95 year old a lady mm. moved from a, she was she was in a in a house uh, and and somebody was looking after in the mm. house because she was 95 she moved out of her house into a nursing home mm. because she had an 80 year old son <laughs> who was terminally <laughs> ill wow. she said i'm going to go and look after my child Whew. listen he's mm. he's old he's gray he's 80 mm. he's a grandfather already mm. but his mother says i must go to my son oh mm. It's an unbreakable bond. When Jesus taught us to pray our Father, He was telling us, do you know that you have an unbreakable connection with God? He's not just your God. If He was only your God, you could fall out of favor with Him and you mm. are gone. Mm. But now He's your Father and nothing can separate us from the love of God, our Father. May the Lord bless you i believe in the coming weeks we will carry on because even though it sounds elementary as you read it or mm. as you recite it mm. there is too much revelation in the scripture imagine mm. Mm. somebody imagine you like somebody mm. and you want to contact that person mm. you would 
do many things to get that person's <laughs> number because you want to phone that person. Mm. Jesus was here giving to his disciples mm. their father's phone In number. number. <laughs> If you want to contact him, do that. Mm. Say that. <laughs> awesome. So, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand over to you now, sir. But I believe that today, many people mm. will rediscover their status. As children of God, and they will redistate, rediscover their standing as beneficiaries of their father. They will know that they are loved by this father. They have access. They they have a, 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 a intimate invitation, and they have a unbreakable relationship. With their father, no matter what the devil has told you, no matter how you have failed him, because as children, especially growing up, we are toddlers. We become preschoolers. We become. We go to school. We become teenagers. We do various things that disappoint mm -hmm. our parents, our father. We disappoint our earthly fathers. But we never, go, we never end up where the father will tell you, "I'm no longer your father; mm. you are no longer my son." God is calling us back to have access, mm. intimacy, and relationship. Let that be your breath of fresh air on this Saturday morning, the 12th of March. May the Lord richly bless you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Whew. I am so speechless now. Hallelujah. <laughs> I am Hallelujah. so so speechless. Oh, I think God. I personally needed this glory, breath of fresh air. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for yes, this Father. time. Thank you for this incredible word. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you know that so many, even like myself, yes, Lord, battling with condemnation, yes, Lord, trying hard, yes, Father, this religion. Yes, Lord. Trying to please a God who is perfect. Yes, yes, Lord. And we are not perfect. Yes, Lord. And that weight of condemnation that the yes, enemy Father. just throws. Yes, Father. And just makes you feel so small, so far from God. Yes, Father. And so. Um, Deserted by God. Yes, Lord. I th I thank you, Lord, for this incredible word. Oh yes, Holy thank Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, that you have spoken through your servant, oh, Pastor yes, Mark. Oh yes, Holy Spirit. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that all those who are listening, yes, including Father. myself, yes, that Father. We, every time when the enemy comes mm. with all those condemnations mm. and all those accusations of how far mm. we have failed. Yes, Lord. How miserably we have performed, mm. Father. We just we will lift up our eyes mm. and our hands like little children mm. and say, "Daddy, yes, Father, Lord. yes, Father." Here mm. we are. Carry us yes, on Father. your shoulders. Yes, Lord. Mm. Carry us in your arms, mm. Father. I pray for those who are listening right now. Yes, Father. And all those who have been heavy laden, oh and yes, those who who have been battered down by life's difficult issues. Yes, Father. Real issues. Mm. I pray, Lord, that you minister to them your Father mm. kind of love. Yes, Father. That they may know that they are beloved. Mm. They are your favorite. Yes, Father. Lord Jesus, that you pour out your love. Through the mm. Holy Spirit, thank you so much for this incredible word. Mm. You know how so much I needed it. Yes, Lord. And thank Jesus. you so much for yes, Pastor Father, Mark. You, thank Father. you for this session. We thank you, you so much. Thank you, Lord. We yes, bless Father. your name. Amen. Amen. Um, over to you, Pastor Mark. Amen. You can just round up again. Um, thank you, sir, for that incredible prayer. I believe that. That God um, knew, and that He knows that we limit ourselves mm. through our perspectives. Mm. 
if we have a perspective of God as creator only, mm. as sovereign judge of the universe only, mm. as sovereign king over creation only, then we have an incomplete picture of God. Mm. I believe that God wants us to see Him in full color from all angles. He is not only King, Creator, Judge, is also Father. More and even more over, more, even above that, He is not only Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, He became our Father. And being our Father assures, that, assures us that we are His children. The, the Bible says um, in the book of Genesis, it says that God wanted the earth to be to be to be populated mm. and he wanted the earth to be cared for and he wanted the ground to be tilled mm. and the scripture says but there was no man mm. who could till the ground and then God knew that yeah, he is king in heaven so he cannot relinquish mm. his throne in heaven mm. to come look after the earth mm -hmm. So the king decided to put some princes and mm. princesses <laughs> on his embassy on earth. Mm. Mm. And then he created Adam and Eve. Mm. And then the devil came and the devil tried to steal from us what we received from God, mm. rightfully. Mm. But Jesus Christ came mm. and he restored unto us mm. all those things that the enemy has stolen. Mm. And when he taught us how to pray, he said, when you pray, this is what you should say. Our Father, I want to show you that your Father loves you. Your Father receives you with open arms. Your Father will never reject you. Your Father will always provide for you. You will never have to get a maintenance order against your Father in heaven because He knows what you need and He will supply and provide all your needs according to mm. His riches in glory. What He mm. wants us to do is to do what that prodigal son did. Within our circumstances, make a decision. Make a decision of your will um, and a, a conscious decision and employ your will and say, I will rise up and go to my father. And I believe this is what this session is this morning, that our father is awesome, wonderful, yes, but he's also loving and kind. Mm. And uh, he, he is giving us a brush of fresh air, fresh mm. air this morning mm. in the sense that he is reminding us that, hey, you have access to me. I, I want to have an intimate relationship with you. I'm giving you an invitation to return. And R, you will always have a relationship with me. And I believe that this morning, somebody who, is, who, who has backslidden mm. away from God, mm has just slidden back to God. Hallelujah. I believe that somebody who lost their way mm. found their way this Hallelujah. morning. And it is so beautifully summarized in Luke 15 verse 24 where the father speaks to the older son mm. and he says, should we not rejoice? Mm. And should we not be glad? Because this son of mine, this son of mine, not this wasteful drunkard of mine, not this wasteful um, person who spent all my money with prostitutes and harlots mm. mm. and riotous living. He calls him this son of mine. I want to remind you that when God sees you, he sees a son. He sees a daughter. He does not see your performance. He does not see your sin. He does not see your failures. He does not see all your shortcomings. He sees you as his son this morning if you have not received the lord jesus christ as your lord and savior just say these words after me this morning say father god, father god i come to you i come to in you the in the name of jesus in the name of jesus thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus for dying for my sin for dying for my sins and for raising up and for raising up so that i may raise up in victory so that i may raise up in victory thank you father thank you father that i have access to you again that i have access to you i again. have renewed intimacy i have renewed intimacy a standing invitation a 
outstanding invitation and a rock solid relationship and a rock solid relationship i thank you that my life will never be the same I thank again thank you that my life will never be the same again i receive a new life i receive a new life and i will follow you and i will follow you for the rest of my days for the rest of my days in jesus name in jesus name amen amen if you have prayed that prayer please follow up in and, and pray and ask the lord to guide you mm-hmm. uh, guide you to bible believing church where people are serving the lord in spirit and in truth and have fellowship around you so that you can grow so that you can um grow stronger in your faith and so that you can successfully battle the old things the devil always tries to come back and bring the old things mm-hmm. but every time he brings the old things back mm-hmm. so they are even older than yeah. they were before <laughs> so they are not nice <laughs> so we are not receiving Amen. The Lord will give them his, will give us victory mm. over those old things. May the Lord richly bless you mm. and may you go from strength to strength. And every time when the devil tries to stifle you mm. and to press the air out of you, remind him mm. I have a breath of fresh air. I have Alleluia. I have access. Alleluia. I have a standing invitation to intimacy. Mm. and i have a rock solid reputation Alleluia. and you breathe that fresh air knowing that god will always be your father and that's the one thing that will never change may the mm. lord bless you in ah. jesus name amen amen and amen you see Alleluia. the trouble with this is now landing <laughs> <laughs> you know with with this amazing show you know the intimate moment with god, god. in his presence you don't want to you, you can't get stop. enough you don't want to stop you don't want to <laughs> you know it's amazing oh, hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah Glory. but do tune in every saturday oh, yes. at 10am oh, yes. so that you can catch it when Amen. the train is leaving <laughs> you know don't don't miss the train catch it when the train is leaving when it's leaving see you it's, next uh, week 10am thank you so much for some mark hallelujah. it's thank been you, a sir. pleasure and a the blessing lovely, yes, thank sir. you for our dear listeners and viewers for tuning in it's such a pleasure and we believe that you have been incredibly blessed hallelujah. god hallelujah. richly bless you we're going to listen to sir you are Amen. and indeed you are, you are blessed amen <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> thank amen. you lord god bless you hallelujah mm.